It is 647 Arizona, so most of us have a go-to for that extra boost to wake up. Caffeinated water, though, right now it seems to be the hot new thing. There are some things you should know, though. We want to bring in our Nohelani Graf, getting some answers from our ABC 15 Health Insider. Hey, good morning, Kaylee. So when we look at what you're going to use to start your day, whether you brew it yourself or you head to the vending machine, you've got your teas, you've got your coffees, you have your energy drinks. You can see all the empty spots here. Oh, we're going to draw back the curtain for you here in our ABC 15 break room. This spot's always open, though, and that's because usually there's caffeinated water really popular right now. But there are some downsides to caffeine overall. So our ABC 15 Health Insider is helping you pick the smartest pour for your health. For a lot of people, the day doesn't start without that cup of joe. If coffee isn't your cup of tea, maybe you grab an energy drink. And now caffeinated water is making a splash. At the heart of them all, the same concept. It gives you this false sense of security where you're actually sleep deprived, but you feel awake. Let's look at the numbers first. A regular cup of black coffee has about 80 to 100 milligrams of caffeine, according to the FDA. It's 30 to 60 for various teas. Energy drinks range from 150 to 400 milligrams per can. I really don't think there's a safe amount of energy drink that you should be having. You usually have sugar and other additives and chemicals that have a lot of other harmful effects on the body. Our ABC 15 Health Insider, Dr. Shad Marvasti, warns too much caffeine can hurt you, raising your blood pressure, causing more strain on your heart, dehydration, kidney failure, and sleep deprivation overall leads to a wide range of health issues. So it's a hard pass on energy drinks for him. That being said, if you need a boost, you can drink responsibly. If you look in the realm of like green tea, uh, which has a lot of antioxidants um, that can prevent cancer. Um, some studies have shown it helps with heart disease. He'd rank coffee next, but hold the added syrups and sugar. The general recommendation is no more than 400 milligrams a day. But Dr. Shad suggests a two cup limit and follow with lots of water, which is where caffeinated water comes in. It might be a relatively good option because you're getting water and it's more simple. He says more studies are also needed. Until then, turn the can around. And if there's as much caffeine, sugar, or additives as an energy drink, put a lid on it. So here's the deal also when it comes to caffeinated water and why you've got to read those labels of all of these cans that we have here. One of them has about 100 milligrams of caffeine. Another has 200, which would be your two cups of coffee already. So you can't just throw back a bunch of caffeinated waters either if you're watching your health. In the meantime, if you want to ditch the caffeine altogether, Dr. Shad says look for protein sources like nuts and seeds. And he even says there's a study, Kaylee, where an apple will give you as much of an energy boost as a cup of coffee, thanks to the natural sugars and fiber. Plus, you're not going to crash the same when it starts to wear off. Okay, that's a win-win. Although, when you say, you know, toss out the caffeine all together, it gives me an anxiety attack. No, not happening. It's tough for me. Sorry. I can't do it. It would be great, <laughs> but it's not happening. All right. No, hey, thank you so much. She's talking about 